What do you do when you feel you're being discriminated against and getting subpar work because of it? Well, that's exactly what this caller felt she might be dealing with, and I give her some advice on managing the situation. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to hear me coach more live callers just like this one. Karen, welcome to the show. How can I help you today? Hi, yes, um, I'm calling because I, I really am concerned um, at my job. I am basically a, a human resource professional. I've been at, I said, a higher ed institution. I've been at the institution for just a little bit. The main concern I have is that um, because I am of Latino descent and my supervisors of Latino descent, I'm a black Latina. Uh, the, the main point is that I noticed that the work that I receive is less of a um, challenge. It's not as intense as uh, my supervisor would give to my other coworkers who are of Latino mm. descent, but more so of lighter skin or uh, are basically white Latinas. And so I'm very concerned because I graduated with honors. I do a great, excellent job. She actually does give me feedback and say that my work is good, but the work that I get is very mediocre and I'm really in looking to advance. And I just feel like there's not really much equity as it relates to the workflow that, that I receive in comparison to my other uh, Latino brothers and sisters. So I wanted to know really what can I do to make sure there's a level of equity um, as it relates to like work and performance evaluations uh, based on work provided and still have the opportunity to advance uh, in the field without being discriminated against uh, because of me being a black Latina. Okay, so think of this at an individual level. So in other words, you are seeing a discrepancy between the kind of work that you're getting and, and the challenge and you want a little bit more challenging work versus your other colleagues. So, you know, without putting someone on the defensive or making them have to defend themselves or something, it at least just starts with a sort of conversation with your supervisor. I do talk with okay. her. It's not necessarily a, a negative relationship that we have. I just realized that, you know, when I, when me and actually it's another uh, black Latina that's there, basically we have the same level of education. Actually, majority of us there do. Would you be able to clearly identify the type of, of work that you are assigned? Yeah, uh, for instance, um, we have to make sure that when our, our applications um, come in for specific positions, we have to make sure that they meet uh, our uh, EEO standards and affirmative action standards that's been set uh, by the state as well as the federal government. Well, with, um, with my cohorts, uh, she would basically give those assignments as it relates to uh, project presentations, reviews, uh, actual reporting uh, to the, you know, to my cohorts who are, who are um, of, of lighter skin. And then the basics work of, of collecting the applications itself and just counting the applications and counting the, the uh, documents and putting them in the system more so data entry entry level type of work uh, to mm -hmm. to me and, and my and my other cohort and that's like a consistent like I don't have a problem doing it. it's no problem at all but it's, I just noticed that the, a lot of the work is very mediocre or for instance like yeah um, if our receptionist is not available or um, you know if our if her assistant is not available then we will step in and do that work which is not a problem okay, again. Okay. It's just, it's very mediocre. You're getting assigned things that are not very challenging. You want to do some things that are a little more creative, a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more interesting. I, I get it. So if you sat down with your, your supervisor and, and said, you know, hey, I'm noticing that, you know, uh, these kinds of assignments are, are not coming to me. Um, and I would like, I would personally like to have more of those types of things. I would like to do some presentations. Um, can you tell me what I would need to do or what you would need to see from me to feel that I would be that I would be ready for some of that stuff? And just so we're not putting her on the defensive and kind of making her have to defend something, 
at least at the initial conversation, but as an initial conversation, letting her know, hey, this is an issue for me. Um, I'd like to see something different. And then giving her the room to talk to you about, okay, well, what would I need to do for you to give me those kinds of assignments? We're not totally sure what the problem is. Like, is it for sure that she's unconsciously biased against you, discriminating? Is it that for sure? Or is it something else? Like, let can we give her the benefit of the doubt and see, hey, what is it that's making you not and if she if she doesn't have a good answer, if it's not clear, then you might start to to kind of go towards the okay, so maybe there's an unconscious bias here of some sort, and maybe that's what's at play. But I would suggest at least initially giving your coworker or your your supervisor the benefit of the doubt, and just seeing if there's something, some other explanation that she can give you. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, part of me, I'm a little, I'm not going to say scared. You know, I I want to keep my job. I'm thankful for my job yeah. it's just you know because we work with affirmative action to a certain extent we kind of understand how things are are ran and because of course there's between uh we both in, are considered protective class groups if it comes to a point where i know it's because of my skin tone you know how would i actually be able to help myself is it best that i just yeah. Leave and find a better job or is, should I really stand up and, and do something about this? It's one of the issues that I've seen when there's a lot of focus on these sort of social identity categories is, you know, um, people are very scared of offending each other. And so everybody's kind of walking on eggshells. And that's not a collaborative, productive work environment. So it's it's good to have a lot of psychological safety in an environment where you can talk to each other and tell each other how you're feeling without this fear of being retaliated against or offending people or something like that. So I know it's a tricky balance. Hopefully that's where we're heading towards is where we can talk to each other really about anything that we're feeling in a way that doesn't put people on the defensive and doesn't create retaliation for us. So I would suggest taking this in two parts. So the first part is sitting down with your supervisor and letting her know, hey, I'm noticing I'm not getting this type of assignment. Just curious why, because I'd really like to have these types of assignments. I'd like some more challenging and interesting things. Can you tell me what you're seeing or not seeing that I would need to do in order to get those types of things? Let her talk, let her explain. If she gives you an explanation or if she gives you something that makes sense, then maybe you can take that and do what she says, hey, what what she needs to see. Like, well, I would need to see this and this and this from you. And if you go, okay, I can do that. And then you go and do those things. And if she's still not at that point, then living up to her word and giving you some more challenging things, then I think it's worth another conversation saying, hey, so I've done the things you said. It still seems like I'm not getting those you know, assignments. And I'm just getting a little concerned that it's about something else. And you could be vulnerable in that moment and say like, it's a little weird for me to have this conversation. I'm a little uncomfortable, but I do think it's worth bringing up. And I just wanna have this conversation in a way that doesn't put you on the defensive or that doesn't make you feel I'm attacking you because that's not what's happening. I really value my work here and I, I value you as a supervisor. And so I want to, you know, have a good working relationship, but this is what I'm noticing. So that could be like the second part. If the first part, you know, goes well and you've, you've done what she said. If in that first conversation though, she doesn't have a clear explanation, then it might be worth bringing that, that point up at that point. Um, but again, I think it doing it in a way where you're, it doesn't feel like you're attacking, you're just you're basically bringing it up like, hey, or this is an interpretation that I'm I'm having about what's going on here. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if that's what's happening, but that's what I'm feeling. And I just wanted to bring it up for you. So that way you're not putting out all on her and telling her what she's doing wrong or bad or something, but just how you're feeling, how it's impacting you. I'm going to, I'm going to like have a conversation with her and definitely see if I can just get some more uh, quality work and see what happens first. And definitely if I see that it's like the same thing, I would love to just sit down and talk to her and, and just see what's going on. Hopefully, you know, I'm gonna actually, yeah. uh, do you think I should talk to my other co uh, coworker? Um, you know, we kind of do the same thing. You think we should talk uh, about this together? You think I should just really focus in on what I, you know, just what I need to do for myself. My tendency is I would suggest to just do it for yourself first because what we don't want to do is we don't want to create gossip. I would suggest doing it as an individual first. And then if it's if it actually works and like you start getting more challenging assignments and it's interesting, then you could go to your coworker and say, hey, just FYI, I had this conversation and it went well and 
now I'm getting these kind of assignments. And, you know, so if you're interested in getting those kinds of things too, you should have a conversation with her too. Thank you so much. I am going to, um, yeah, no problem. You know, listen and take heed to that. And thank you so much. If you want to come back on and give us, you know, sort of updates on how it went, please do. But uh, otherwise, thanks for coming on, Karen. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Peace Building with Dr. Pollock show. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more workplace conflict advice. Share on social media if you think your friends and colleagues would benefit from this episode. And if you have a workplace conflict and want to be a caller on our show, for free coaching and advice, please email podcast at pollockpeacebuilding.com. Thanks.